Hey, what up, everybody? Uh, this is Stevie Breach coming to you live in 3D here uh, from the Christmas Center. Uh, I saw an awesome string of videos that I just had to get in on. Uh, I saw that my buddy uh, Billy Paz One, back in the day, I used to call him Billy Pazone before I really knew him that well. But hell, the guy made videos about making cannolis back in the day, so I thought that was his gimmick. I thought he was going for a Pazone. Uh, but Billy Paz One, I saw Harpo's video today. I haven't had a chance to check it out because it just got uploaded. My man Sean Blackerford. I uh, just put up a video of these videos about how you got into professional wrestling. I encourage anybody out there to make one of these because, honestly, I want to know as many people's stories. I hope uh, people's stories are just like me. Uh, basically, what happened was we were over at my grandma's house, and uh, my two cousins were upstairs watching TV. I was downstairs. I was uh, probably about I'm five years younger uh, than my next older uh, cousin, and I'm about ten years than the next one. Um, so, uh, I just crept upstairs to see what they were doing when you're younger. You always want to see what the, uh, the older kids are doing. You want to get in on that. And so I crept up into, uh, Grandma's room, popped open the door. They were watching WrestleMania 3. Uh, their eyes lit up like they were about to get in trouble. Uh, I was the kind of kid who, uh, you know, before I even started watching pro wrestling, I was a kid who always liked to get in trouble. I was running around hitting people. Uh, let's get out of the deeper issues now. But, um... Uh, they they were, I don't, they were probably told to not to let me uh, in there and watch uh, watch that with them. Uh, but I kicked in, uh, watched one of the first match I ever saw was the Killer Bees on WrestleMania three. Uh, Killer Bees, great tag team, uh, Blair and Brunzel, uh, some great high flyers. Um, if, if you're able uh, ever able to catch up to some uh, Killer Bees, I'm not sure if they're on the High Flyers DVD. They should be. If they're not on the Allied Powers DVD, that's a shame. A uh, real great tag team after this video, pop up to the uh, YouTube search bar, type in uh, Killer Bees uh, Wrestling, WWF, and uh, I honestly don't think that uh, you will find a match that you don't like. A great, great team. Uh, I don't think I have a comp of them, but if I, if I, if I uh, do, I'd recommend it. And uh, if I don't, I'm uh, looking forward to get one, because uh, they, they're a great tag team. Um, in that match, uh, basically the Bees were flying around like crazy. Uh, on the heels, uh, the uh, on the heels took advantage. Hacksaw Jim Duggan came down. Honestly, I didn't know who any of these people were. I didn't know what wrestling was, but the way that the crowd popped for Duggan just made Duggan seem like he was ten times bigger than what Hulk Hogan was. Um, I remember that match like crazy because it's my first match. I don't even remember uh, if I stayed in there and watched Hogan and Andre or not, or or what happened. Maybe I got yanked out of the room by my dad or my grandma by the, by the horse collar or something like that. Ooh. Um, but th that was my first match that I ever saw, and it just kept growing from there and there. Uh, basically, uh, how I grew up, my, my, my parents divorced when I was a young kid, so in order for um, my dad to go out and live the single life, still single today, ladies, yeah, come on. Uh, what he, what um, my grandma would do is he, she would babysit me on, oh, babysit, I'm, I'm, I was a young adult then. No, I was a little guy, uh, but, but she'd babysit me. I'd sleep over at her house on Saturday night so he'd be able to go out and do, you know, what guys do, hit the bar or whatever he wanted to do. And I would go to church with her on Sunday morning. We'd come home after church. Uh, you know, she'd get ready to go to work. And uh, I'd go, go to work whether I do small jobs around the office. Um, but as she was getting ready, I'd eat lunch and I'd watch Wrestling Superstars or Wrestling Challenge. It came on Channel 58. It was a... Uh, like a superstar show, but it was uh, worse than that. It was uh, way worse competitors what superstars is today. Uh, it was basically just straight up jobbers. You know, if you got a main event that was like Repo Man versus Crush, uh, that was the the biggest thing in the world to you. You're like, oh my god, they're giving away WrestleMania here. Um, but I remember uh, one point, uh, freaking eighty eighty eight uh, loves this uh, this story. Um, but um, what happened was uh, she came in the room as Shawn Michaels came in. Uh, Shawn Michaels was doing his uh, first gimmick after the Rockers, where he was just a heartbreak kid, and uh, I didn't know what gay was back in the day. You know, you, back in the day, we didn't throw around gay like you do now. Everything's gay. This is gay. That's gay. This this snowblower was gay. Uh, whatever. But I didn't know what that was. But obviously, that was the gimmick he was going for. He was the over over the top guy, and I just looked at my grandma when she walked in the room, and I said, Grandma, I hate this guy. And my grandma, you know, the you know the type of person, Stephen. We don't use words like hate. Hate is hate's a strong word. We don't say that. That that is not good. And I just said, no, grandma, you don't understand. I hate this guy. And um, uh, I always thought that was pretty funny. Um, it just kept on growing and growing from there. Watching jobber shows, we you know we didn't make a ton of money. Um, in order to watch, why am I wearing the 3D glasses? If I was in 3D, you'd be wearing the glasses. So that's a failed gimmick.
<laughs> Let's forget all about that. Uh, but basically, um, the, uh, just kept on going from there. I was never able to get the pay-per-views. Um, first pay-per-view we ever got was uh, SummerSlam uh, 93. Uh, Luger and Yoko, that, oh, that burned the house down. I remember the first time somebody gave me a tape. That was SummerSlam 91, which is still my uh, uh, my first... Uh, and my or my all time favorite pay per view. That was the first tape that like somebody came over. They taped it off to the TV, and I was able to keep it. That was my first tape that I had that I watched all the time. That's probably why it's my favorite pay per view still today. Um, but we would you know go to Blockbuster and uh, rent them. Uh, the best places to go actually instead of Blockbuster were the mom and pop shops. Mom and pop shops were uh, really cool. Uh, but it was a little different than today. Today you basically just grab a DVD off the shelf. They scan it. Um, so. You, basically, what you had to do is you had to grab the actual box, and you'd go up to the counter. The person at the counter would have to go in the back, and they'd have to find the tape off the shelf. So it was basically pretty embarrassing. And uh, if, if you're a wrestling fan, I, I remember uh, my grandma going up there just shaking her head like, oh, my God, we're in this crap again. Um, but um, that's just how we did it. Um, back in the day, um, it, was, it was way different if you, were watching the, uh, if you weren't watching the uh, pay-per-views. And you were just trying to watch the uh, the jobber shows and keep up, uh, because you had to uh, watch uh, the the the, uh, the next uh, challenge or superstars after uh, the pay per view, and they would normally have Mean Gene in the update center giving you updates with Mean Gene, and um, they would they wouldn't show video; they would just show pictures of the event. They would they would show you title changes, and they would show you the main event, and that was it. If you were interested in any of the uh, lower card feuds. You basically had to uh, subscribe to a newsletter, call an 800 or, or 900 number, uh, listen to the uh, the line, which I was never able to do, um, or you'd have to read the WF magazine, and they would show you pictures in there and give you a review of the event. But that was always two months behind, so you always had to wait like two months in order to get the next issue of the WF magazine in order to find out what happened in those lower ones. But it's just what we did it back then. Um, finally, we were able to... Uh, Get it uh, back in the day. Now we have digital cable. Back in the day, we had analog cable. They had different boxes, mm -hmm. and if you opened the box up and you were able to put a chip in there, it became what was called a what's called a black box. Uh, and we we never had one of those, but somehow I was able to watch pay per views, mm -hmm. and uh, that's just how it kept going. I can see I'm close to uh, eight minutes here. I didn't think it was going to be this long, but um, I was going to start talking about how I started tape trading, and that just how my wrestling. Uh, my love for wrestling just grew even more because that's how I got into uh, other promotions, other things, uh, except for WWF, WCW. W WCW sucked to watch back in the day. It was great. The only thing that sucked about it was that uh, back in the day before TBS got smart and they were ran by Okies out there in Atlanta, um, all the shows were on a three, they weren't on a three hour delay, but they were on, the, you'd watch the commercial and you'd be like, the main event, it's on at 6.05. But it came on at three oh five. They didn't tell us, you know, and so it was hard to remember. Uh, you know, it, it was going to come on at six o'clock. That's a good time for wrestling on a Saturday or a Sunday, because basically you're you're either home or you're not. But three o'clock, if you're a kid, you're out playing basketball, you're running through the park, you're doing something like that. It's hard to remember to get home, or you had to wake up at like uh, basically five in the morning uh, to watch the earlier show. Um, but that's how I, I came to see guys like Ric Flair and everything, like, everything like that from WCW. And, um, you know, I hope everybody else out there who watches this, I hope a lot of other people are, are able to make these videos. Like uh, Billy Paz 1, check him out. Harpo, Sean Blackford. I, have, I hope I'm able to get my other friends out there to make these videos. Anybody who's watching this, just make a quick video saying how you, um, you, know, you fell in love with professional wrestling. How you, it, it just grew went into basically being the mark you are today. I mean, not everybody like me is able to wear a Miz shirt, you know, to the mall or to the bank or something like that. They're pretty... Either embarrassed or they keep it hidden. Now, even Jim Knight says he didn't really wear his wrestling gear out of the house. Um, but I do. I don't care. I go to work. I tell everybody, watch my videos. Um, that's, just, that's just who I am. And everybody knows I'm the professional wrestling guy. I'm the guy who wrote um, Elimination Chamber off on the, uh, on the calendar for a day off. Um, but, you know, that's about it. Hopefully I can get my buddies like Above Average Buddha. I really want to see you make a video if you can. Freaking yeah, 88 make a video. Uh, Luke Cage, I'll try to talk, he doesn't make videos anymore, so fuck it, um, but I'll get as many people as I can, so, uh, check it out, that's how I fell in love with professional wrestling.